Hello everyone. I thought I'd shift topics today and move away from the Enneagram, but I'll go back very soon and um, also reading my own writing. But I wanted to talk about writing itself. Okay, so you see I have here poured a nice little flight of wines. Okay, um, actually it's the same wine, but just for show, it's actually a Coppola cab that I bought. Smelling it, you know, it's okay. It's not high end, it's okay. It's all right. Anyway, so this is what I want to talk about subjectivity and objectivity in art. I feel a lot of that can compare to wine tasting. Now, how is this, okay? I, I, I am an avid wine taster. I love wine tasting. I live in an area where there's a ton of wineries and that's one of my favorite things to do. I love to go wine tasting. Now, one aspect of wine tasting is that the human palate will vary, meaning we have different tastes. So what I, what I might taste is good to someone else tastes not so good. So because our palate is different and you know no one can, you you know you can't fault them for that. So this is where experience and understanding of wine and you know um multiple tasting over time you know enters in. So when I first started tasting wine like more than 10 years ago I admit I liked sweet wines and that's usually where everyone begins sweet wines they love you know you see people in the grocery store these usually young girls dudes guys go for the beer but you know young girls were will often reach for a Moscato a wine cooler uh, something with sweetness in it and really what is it they're craving it's not the wine but the sugar okay and I was no different I started out the same way I liked sweet wines I liked ooh tastes like blueberry ooh tastes like raspberry this is like 12 years ago but then over time as my palate developed I found that wasn't satisfying I found it was too sugary it was kind of just boring. I'm like, why am I tasting wine if all I want to taste is sugar? So over time I found a, a more of an affinity for drier wines. And this I felt, you know, comes with experience. So you, your palate evolves, your taste evolves, sort of like with art. Now, a lot of people like to throw around. Art is subjective. Everything is subjective. Okay? Now, going back to the palate, it's true that, that you know, the human palate, what you taste and what I taste could be very different. You know, I could taste something and it could taste like absolute gutter swill, but to you, it can be, oh my God, this is the um, nectar of the gods. And usually when you read about wine tastings, they give a wine rating. So they give like medals, they give how, how enthused people are when they taste it. And, and you know, it's not that consensus means ultim the ultimate truth. It's just, what do most people tend to favor? Now, while yes and no, that applies to art, okay? But going back to the wine, when you do a wine tasting or any kind of flight here, um, usually it's blind, okay? It should be blind. So you don't know if you're getting um, a $90 bottle of wine or a $7 bottle of wine. You don't know what you're getting, but you taste it and you should. So there are certain qualities, aroma, does it smell medicinal? Does it smell like alcohol? Do you, you taste a fruit forward? For example, if you're making a Cabernet, if your Cabernet comes out like tasting like blueberries, the chances are probably extremely high that you messed up. What you have isn't a cab, you messed up. There's something wrong in your chemistry. So 
there's a good way to make a cab and a bad way. I mean, there's one winery not close, not far from my house I've gone to, and I did two tastings there, and both times that I taste, tasted their Zinfandel. It was one of the worst Zinfandels I've ever tasted. It was terrible. Literally, like I've had better Zinfandels from a $10 bottle at the grocery store. It just, you know, I smelled it. It just had this sort of um, alcoholy stench, and when I tasted it, I didn't taste any fruit. It was just, ugh. And it happened both times. So I'm not going to purchase their Zinfandel, which they're selling for like, you know, $30 a bottle, which is like ridiculous because I'm like, ah, oh, you can buy a better bottle for 10 bucks at the grocery store. So here's where the comparison to art comes. You know, people confuse taste with objective quality. There's sort of like, there's a good way, there's a right way to make a Cabernet Sauvignon in a wrong way. If your Cabernet Sauvignon tastes like blueberries, you've done something wrong. It's not a cab, in other words. But, you know, you, take, you create something, you create your cab and you taste fruit forward. It doesn't smell like alcohol. You know, fresh aroma. A lot of times you have to let wine breathe. So this is why, ooh, my cat is moving the camera. This is why they let these sit out like this. Um, and blind tastings are very important. So that way you're not influenced by the price. Now, as far as art goes, when you read something and you see it's being praised in the New York Times and you see the, uh, or poets and writers, and you see the chapter excerpts and they're bland and dull as shit and you sit there and you question yourself, maybe it's me. Well, that's what they want you to think because it's all about image. I had a discussion with someone I like very much, someone who I, I like very much, who I was trying to explain art to this person. And anyone who knows me knows how much I despise Zadie Smith as a writer. I think she's probably the worst writer I've ever seen published, especially one that has been praised and upheld as some literary genius. I've looked through multiple of her books. I have not found one sentence, let alone a paragraph, that illuminates this concept. That I, I don't see anything where I can quote and it stands alone. So in other words, her work, her writing, her clunky, awkward like glass like it sounds like bricks piled on each other her bland dull creations are dependent upon her image what do they i remember when her book white teeth came out and it was all about oh she's oh she's 24 years old and so brilliant and all they ever talk about is how talented and brilliant she is show me the quotes Bring it forward, you know, show me. Explain to me, line by line. Show me in the actual words. But you know what these people depend on? Image, type three, Enneagram three. Image, experience, oh, who she is. Blind tastings. Remove who she is. Give me the excerpts. Put it alongside Proust, Thomas Wolfe, Shakespeare, you know, whoever you lump is some safe genius and see how, how, it, how it upholds. The current Nobel winner, I won't say her name, is a bad poet. And um, yeah, she, uh, she wrote a number of poems uh, it's funny, I wrote an essay about her, about flowers, and you're welcome to look through my poetry book and compare, compare the two. Um, again, blind tastings. Remove the Nobel winner. Look at hers, look at mine. Understand line breaks, music, alliteration, assonance, symbolism. 
metaphor. This requires thought. This requires insight. People in academia who read the Nobel winner, Zadie Smith, are relying on the image, the image to carry them. Sociopolitical bullshit, PC this or that, oh, the experience. What about the imagination, the insight, the craft, the technique, the music? Where's all that? The problem is, is that no one in these writing programs gives a shit nor can understand what quality is. They don't know. About a year ago, I remember getting into an argument with some PhD writing professor who's trying to champion Robert McFarlane on par with <laughs> Lauren Isley. I fucking laughed. I'm like, okay, McFarlane is totally um, verbose, overwritten. Every other sentence he has to name drop some book he read or some place he traveled. He relies on cliches. When I look at his, his work, his writing, I read something that to me feels like something written in 1850. It's just old man writing. Whereas I read Isley, it's totally fresh. And the only reason she made that comparison was because they both write about nature. Okay, that's like saying that Robinson Jeffers and Ted Hughes are similar because they both wrote about hawks. No, okay. Jeffers is a great poet. Ted Hughes wrote garbage that no one would remember were it not for his greatly superior and much more talented wife who stuck her head in the oven, okay? Ted sucked. It was his wife who was the talent. Don't compare him to Jeffers other than to say he was less than. It's insulting. And anyone who wants to say it's all subjective can fuck themselves sideways with a baseball bat unlubricated Stealing that from Chris Godinas. I linked to her. Um, and this is why. This is why we do a blind tasting. Okay? This is why. Someone you might meet might think that Twilight is the greatest book ever written. But what are they, 15? Are all opinions equal? What have they read? What have they understood? Most often when I see these people championing people like Zadie Smith, bad writers like her, or Louise Gluck, or whomever, it's all about emotion. Oh, look at this. Oh, sociopolitical this. Societal that. PC this. Everything is so, oh, they're so talented, but they can't demonstrate it in the actual words. Because I remember when I was 23, 22 very early 20s, I subscribed to Poets and Writers magazine, and I remember reading the excerpt of the poetry and the prose, and they would quote the most dull and boring and crappiest writers. And I remember, and they would praise them. And I remember thinking, if this is what great writing is, then I don't want to be that. Because something in me knew. I didn't, I didn't get it. It, it. it made my mind feel like flat soda. So I went with what I felt and I'm like no this isn't this isn't me and those people who subscribe to that those people who cling to that are interested in the fame the acclaim the accolades but you know what they all fail they all fade when you're dead because Robert Robert McFarlane you know he reads like an old guy from 1850 but guess what Melville doesn't. Um, Melville is still fresh. And that's something that he doesn't have. Um, I'm not saying he's a terrible writer, but he's mediocre. And to put him on par with Isley shows this professor's utter lack of understanding. And it's just deplorable that people like this teach classes. So people, go, you know, these young students, they go into these classes and they don't have a clue. And they never speak about what's good or bad because they don't know. 
They don't talk about cliches. They don't talk about the actual craft, the musicality, the insight, the um, everything is dependent upon the culture. So I'm going to say, let me see how long, 15 minutes, okay, one more point. I'm going to say, the way a work of art survives, the only way it's imperative that you remove the creator from the work. Once that work is created, it doesn't matter who wrote it. Yes, you want to give credit to the where credit's due. That's not what I'm talking about. But it doesn't matter. Frida Kahlo, her paintings should survive. I don't care that she was what she was and suffered and this and that, okay? If, she, if they were painting painted by a fat white guy named Fred, they should be just as great or good or whatever. Would they be? Would she have the rep would these paintings be known were it not for her life story? How much of the cult of personality plays into part of what is remembered? Um, so, yeah, that's why I stress the blind tastings. Don't just read a line and say, oh, Shakespeare wrote it, so it must be good. No, well, Shakespeare wrote some shit. Can you distinguish the good from the bad? What's that skill? Can you do it? Well, that's something, oh, here's Kiberia. That's something that comes with practice tastings over time, developing your palate. I don't like sugary wines now, but yeah, I like a nice Moscato dessert wine, but it's a dessert wine or a port. It's a dessert wine. But if my Cabernet tastes like blueberries, something's wrong. You know, if you want blueberry wine, that's fine, but don't call it a Cabernet, okay? Don't call, you know, what otherwise is trash, great writing, because it's not. You need to develop your palate. Learn the techniques, learn the skill. Develop your taste. Whitman said, great art requires great audiences. And Oscar Wilde said, criticism is the highest form of autobiography. So what you think is good or bad says more about you than anything you could say. Again, develop your palate, read, immerse yourself, really ask yourself, this thing they're promoting, is it really, is it really there? Or is it image? Is it marketing? Is it Zadie Smith? Hmm. Food for thought, drink for thought. Have a pleasant evening.